All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about Gumi. And I hope this is reaching people out there who are considering growing Gumi. Cause that's what this video is really about, is to kind of promote the awareness and the amazingness of this particular plant. Because I do strongly believe that Gumi is a very, very good piece of fruit and it's really underrated. Um, I don't think a lot of people really even know what it is. So if you're finding this video, uh, maybe you found this particular plant. Maybe you found out about it on a nursery, uh, a nursery's website. Maybe you heard about it from a friend and you want to just do a quick Google search and say, you know, should I grow Gumi? Um, I'm here to tell you in this video that you should, you definitely should. And I grow a lot of different fruits here, guys. It's not like uh, this is the only fruiting plant I grow and I grew up with this thing or something and I have some sort of emotional attachment to it. Um, we're growing all kinds of things here. Persimmons, figs, jujubes, stone fruits, apples, pears, pawpaw, plums, you know, honeyberries, currants, gooseberries, grapes. I mean, literally everything you can think of uh, you can grow in a temperate climate, I've, I'm growing it. I've at least tried the majority of it. And I would say, out of all the fruits that you can grow in a temperate climate that I've tried, this one is easily in my top seven, and it may even be in my top five fruits that I grow. Um, and that's really saying something. Um, I really do believe, especially because of how early it is, like today is only the 13th of June, I think. And... Uh, really around like the ninth this year this bush came into really heavy fruiting i would say in the first couple days of june you get like the first couple berries that start to turn red and uh, you can get your first little bits and pieces of a harvest but you know right now this thing's really going and this is a really early time i mean there's not much else in the yard as an example that is ripening right now um you could like as an example, some other things that are just now turning is like the gooseberry. Uh, the honeyberries are ripening and they've been going really not too far earlier than this, uh, this gumi berry plant here. The strawberries are going, the currants are going. Um, you know, I would normally see some cherries and some apricots probably around this time. Maybe even some of the bush cherries. Um, you know, we've got some raspberries coming in now as well. But this one is of the earliest of all those plants I mentioned. It's really right after the strawberry, right around the same time as the honeyberry. So it's really in that top three or even fourth fruiting plant to start putting out some decent fruit for me. And uh, I just love it. I mean, the, the thing's loaded. I'm going to bring you guys in here for some a view of what the berries look like and and how dense this is I've actually been picking quite a bit off of this bush um, I will give you guys a big warning here okay um, if you're gonna grow Gumi it comes with a caveat I guess because you don't want to grow Gumi of a certain variety uh, I've tried an, uh, a couple different varieties here and the three most common ones you're gonna find are red gem sweet scarlet and carmine and there's a fourth one tillamook or tillamook tillamook is the same thing as carmine as far as i know and uh, carmine is what i'm growing and i ripped out my other ones and the reason i ripped out the other ones is because carmine the berries are four times the size as the other varieties that you'll find um, so this is a really big fruiting variety and i'll bring i'll show you guys this is about the average size of the fruit right here um, so it's about really the size, I guess you could say, as maybe the, you know, like the tip of my pinky or something. Um, I don't know exactly how to uh, size these guys up, but they're, they're not the smallest fruits. They're bigger than honeyberries. They're bigger than blueberries. Um, and overall, I think they have one of the best flavors that you can find. Uh, it does taste a lot like fruit punch. It tastes pretty similar to red currants for those of you guys who have had red currants. 
And it's called Gumi because it's supposed to taste like a gummy bear. And I'll tell you, it actually does. It tastes a lot like that artificial fruit punch, maybe artificial cherry, artificial strawberry flavor that you'll find on a gummy bear. It's true. Now, that's not necessarily why I think they named it Gumi because this plant, these berries will dry up on the bush quite easily. Uh, you'll even notice it very quickly if a bird pecks the fruit. Um, it'll dry probably even the next day or two. Um, and it'll turn into that gummy bear consistency that I'm talking about. Um, so it really does, you know, no crap here. There's no, no lying. The name is <laughs> accurate. And I thought it was a lie. I thought it was nonsense. But it's true. Um, so you're eating nature's gummy bear. Really. This is what this is. Um, so if you like gummy bears, you can have them in that dried state. If you don't eat them as a gummy bear and you eat them like this, fresh and uh, with a lot of juice in them, they have a very thin skin and the rest of it really kind of is like just eating juice in a way. Um, there's not a whole lot of fiber, a whole lot of texture to it. It's like eating gel in a way. Almost like a smooth jelly. Like a smooth gelatin. And that gelatin then dries and turns into a gummy bear. So the skin has a different texture to it, like a thin skin would. And actually, the skin is a bit astringent. So if you don't like the astringency, I actually recommend you let them turn red and really let them hang for a bit because they'll eventually they will lose that astringency. I actually like the astringency part of it and uh, I don't mind picking them a bit early uh, because I think it adds to the effect of eating the fruit. And I, I'm going to go into a separate video of just about the flavor because we could have a whole you know, 20 minute discussion on the flavor of these things and different stages of ripening of the fruit itself. Uh, but I do think it's very complex. It's sour, sweet, tart, and astringent all in one. And um, it really is complex. And I also think it reminds me a lot of a wine. Like you have a nice glass of red wine that really lasts on your tongue and your palate and gives you that feeling afterwards. I still feel it on my palate. Um, so it's a nice experience. Plus there's a pit, so you eat this. You kind of get the juice, you get the skin, you swallow the skin, all that good stuff, and then you spit out the pit. And it, yeah, that's a little bit annoying, I guess, for certain people, but you can't just throw a whole bunch of berries in your mouth, I guess, at once. But I love the experience of eating this. You know, it's kind of like eating a pistachio or a crab legs. Um, you got to work a little bit to get the fruit. Cherries, it's like eating a cherry. It's a really good example. The pit on these, by the way, is quite big because the variety is quite big. So I wouldn't swallow the pit, and it does happen, and I was all right after swallowing the pit. I've done it. I did it last year, too, and I did it this year a couple days ago, and I'm fine. But uh, I wouldn't recommend swallowing it. Um, however, what else can I tell you here about this plant? It grows very vigorously, I find. Um, it's becoming more vigorous as it gets a bit older now, I think. And uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It does fix nitrogen, but I do find it's actually quite easy to control. You can control the size, you can control the vigor here very easily. And uh, the way you do that is you kind of prune these things like you would a peach tree. If you've ever grown peaches, I'm gonna give you guys some sort of view into the uh, production here. They're really just filled. These plants are filled with berries. And uh, I guess I can get you a different angle because maybe that one's not the best with the sun. Yeah, excuse the camera work here, guys. <laughs> There's a lot of plants I don't want to step on. All right, so let me, I mean, look at that. And I've picked quite a bit off of this plant already. This, it's just, it's just amazing, really. I mean, it does pr produce on every node, 
like a peach does on last year's wood. So on last year's wood, you're gonna see that growth. Or you're gonna see those buds on a peach tree. I don't think you can necess necessarily see them on the Gumi, but on all the buds on last year's growth, you will see, um, you will have fruit on all those nodes. So it puts out, if you can get a lot of growth from this year as an example, next year I'm gonna have a lot of fruit. And I do find that the very vigorous shoots that come up um, are just too vigorous to fruit and they won't put out a lot of fruit the following year. But if they're from an established base here that's like at least two years old, um, you're gonna get fruit that year. So they do fruit very young. It doesn't take a whole lot for them to fruit. And they're, again, very productive. Every node that you have from last year's growth, like a peach, you will have two fruits per node. And that's quite productive. I mean, that's like two fruits every node and the nodes are really spaced quite closely on these. Um, yeah, so to me, I think the flavor is incredible. The production's really nice. Uh, the bushiness of it is beautiful. It's very ornamental. It's related to the autumn olive. It is a nitrogen fixer. Um, it uh, has a great place, I think, in an ornamental orchard, even just in an ornamental setting, in a backyard setting. Um, I don't know how well these would do commercially, but I'll tell you, it's an underrated fruit and everybody should grow it. I highly recommend it. So um, thank you guys here for watching this one. We're gonna update you guys a little bit on the flavor and all that. And as we do that, I hope you guys will check out that video. We'll see everybody soon, all right? If you enjoyed this, subscribe. Check out other videos on Gumi and the other fruits that we grow. We'll see everybody soon. Take care.